second in the league in scoring. And they average about 83, 84 points a game. And to keep them in the 70s, that's the, the first task. And I thought when you take it to the other end of the floor, we had six people in double figures and uh, 25 assists on 32 baskets. So we shared the basketball. And on a back-to-back, -back, took advantage of a defense that switched. And we didn't have success uh, at Indiana. But to come in here and play against a team that presents some matchup problems because of their size, they'll put four post players out there. We really took advantage and stretched the court. Uh, got 40 plus points in transition. Uh, attacked the basket, got to the free throw line. But at the end of the day, uh, held some really good uh, individual scores and a good team. Uh, probably eight, nine points under their average. Um, another real test of the team's resilience. You, you got down and you came back. Yes, uh, the easiest thing to do at halftime was to identify the 10 point margin. Mm -hmm. It was one possession where we were supposed to be in zone. We got, I'm supposed to be a man, we got in zone, and they scored a three. It was a transition three in Tolliver, then we didn't trap some. So it was very easy to identify. Mm -hmm. So that you know, gave them uh, immediate ownership. So, hey, when we do these things, you know, we're trapping Tolliver, trying to take the ball out of our hands. She's averaging 18 shots a game. She's only taken four, but she made all of them. Mm -hmm. She can't shoot 50%. 100% or 50%. So we just went back to the game plan of some of the things that we we're trying to do so they wouldn't lose confidence uh, in what they had done right. Vanish suit is really gives you a spark. Yeah, you know, um, I had a tough night the other day, mm -hmm. and to be able to bounce back uh, less than 24 hours with a backup down with foul trouble with the third foul that made me want to chop her head off, but I gave her a hug instead. Uh, and the domino effect of that, Piff extra minutes at the point. Uh, but the point is, she handled it, bounced back, uh, didn't put her head down when they, you know, they were taking advantage of some height matchups, Beard, Sloot, Delisha, you know, Piff was on Delisha, but I thought as a unit, uh, we did a really good job of taking care of each other. What about the 25 assists and how that kind of speaks to the teamwork today and the movement in the offense? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, you, you said it. You know, we, we set a screen. I, I personally like when people switch because then you dictate who guards who. So you can say, let's start this offense with Piff. You screen for Seal, now you got a post player on you. So you can really control it a little bit. And, uh, and I thought Swin set the tone early before she got buckets because she was spring to screen, she was solid, but the action after that was her second cuts that took everybody to the basket and we fed off of it. Then it became infectious. You know, we were reversing the basketball, getting the switch, penetrating and kicking. Uh, and I even thought with Shea Murphy coming off the bench with a lift with double figures. And it took it took everybody, even the players that didn't get in the, get in the game, you know, they were like assistant coaches, which is normal for Tisha and LaCole and Ruth, but even the others. Sylvia is not Sylvia because of her, her knee, apparently. Is the other team kind of finding its way a little bit, not depending on her, not counting on her? Part of that, it, yeah. Um, but I, I thought Seals really sucked it up uh, mm -hmm. tonight. I wanted to get in her mind. Let's try to target 20 minutes, and you tell me how you feel. Because it was a back-to-back, -back, less than 24 hours. But I know she spent the evening with uh, this device called Game Ready. You know, ice compression gets everything. So she spent her time getting ready for today. And before the game, she told me she was 70, 75%. And then as she did a workout to test it, she felt better and better. And I said, you let me know. And she's like, I don't want to come out the game. OK, I can handle that. How happy were you to have your players just in double figures, but down all of them on the court? Extremely uh, happy because it speaks, excuse me, to playing the transition game you like. It speaks to getting your perimeter score in, in place with the epiphany press. But it also speaks to how we played off of Seal. Uh, we struggled the first three possessions they played zone, and then we had Seal working the triangle. So when Seal moves left, two people move left. When Seal moves right, and so we had to get that little dance uh, and movement uh, in sync. And then that's when you started seeing Swin penetrate and kick because everyone was really sucked in on Seal. So even when she didn't touch the ball, it was three possessions in a row where she didn't touch it. But because she moved from side to side, we got a reverse and an opportunity to penetrate because they didn't leave her. Uh, then when they started leaving her, we were dumping to her. Uh, so the key was just those people being in sync uh, and moving when they didn't have an opportunity to score but just run our offense. How badly did you need this one? Yeah, you know, you, you pick the words to describe. It's a ton of them. Uh, needed uh, just in terms of, uh, I don't want to say they're confident group, 
uh, they almost expect it because, you know, they're saying we're preparing the right way, we're working hard, we trust the game plan, you know, we're, we're united. It's not, that, you know, it's one of those things where there's so much good in the circle if you keep putting that into it and learning from those mistakes. And for us, there's so many of them that we can draw to. I can go to the huddle and say, look, it's Tulsa. We're up eight. We're going to run this play. So you have some teaching moments that I can bring back into the huddle to make them think, oh, let me cut a little harder. I have a sharp, crisp pass. I know she said eight million times she has timeouts. If I have to burn it at three seconds, burn it, take care of the ball. So I think a lot of those moments manifest itself in what the things that you guys don't see is I didn't have to have yelling conversations with them because I'm trying to talk to them and they're having a conversation with themselves, which is good. You know, because the coach on the other bench looks at me, I call the play, they steal it. So it was good to see them feeling comfortable and talking things, about, especially when they got difficult. You I have just, what, eight games to, to go? This is, uh, this is it as far as your playoff push, right? Excuse me? Nine games. Nine, um, game, nine games, okay. You know, it, it's good to, this is a bunch of games in a short amount of time. They'll get a couple of days off to recover. Then you go on the road. You know, it's the art, you know, you know the, the schedule. Uh, mm-hmm. Excuse me? Oh, it is eight. Yeah, it's eight. Yeah, it's eight. <laughs> uh, I was hoping he was. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think, to, to, to your question, it's exactly what you need when you can put up numbers uh, defensively and offensively. It wasn't like they were off and we held them to 60s and we scored 65. Uh, to put up 80, to get to the free throw line, to do a little bit better job, take care of the ball in the second half. I think they had more turnovers than us. Um, but I, I think it's obvious that it was needed to give us some momentum to go forward.